Mr. Walgembe would like to know how are the small and medium enterprises coping during the post-COVID period? You know, businesses were caught off guard. A lot of businesses, uh, as a result of that lockdown and the strictness of it, ended up closing. Those that didn't close ended up on life support, really. And uh, as a result, as a federation, we worked with government to put in place a number of stimulus packages. The first one was put in New DB. Uh, and then we discovered that it's best suited for medium-sized businesses. So we then uh, approached government again, and then they rolled out what we now call the Small Business Recovery Fund. Um, so the economy has been rather um, difficult for many of these businesses. Uh, as I've mentioned, many of them have continued to suffer from low sales, low demand, uh, certain sectors particularly have been impacted and have yet to fully recover. How many businesses do you know of small scale and medium that could have closed as a result of COVID-19 pandemic? So we conducted a study and we found that close to 12%, eh, about 12% or so, businesses closed. 12% of what? Could you give a figure? How many businesses do you know? We are 12% of about uh, maybe 1.5 million MSMEs. See, so we are looking around 150, one, you know, that, that's, that's basically the figure. Now some of these entrepreneurs have started other businesses. Government put up a stimulus package of 100 billion, of which the, the line bank was supposed to also top with more 100. And uh, I was told that um, actually the fund reached up to 300 billion, but uh, the absorption rate was just about five businesses. And then you said you lobbied until it was turned into a small business fund. How is the absorption rate? No, the absorption rate has been low because of a number of issues, you know. And every time you bring a new initiative, there'll be teething problems. So I think part of the issue was awareness. A lot of businesses were not aware that this fund existed. And I would say the Federation, Bank of Uganda and the Bankers Association did not work very closely to popularize the fund. So I think that was one of the challenges that you had. The other issue is that the businesses that were ready to tap into the funds needed more money than the fund would allow. So the fund, you could only apply for a maximum of 100 million, but businesses needed more, 200 million, 300 million. This has now been changed. As a federation, we think it shouldn't have been changed, but it has been changed. It means more businesses now have the opportunity to tap into this, uh, to tap into this fund. The other issue is that uh, we needed to streamline the process of applying for the fund and standardize it across all financial institutions. So you found that th the processes were different. You know, one financial institution says this, another financial institution says the other. The issue of banks wanting their existing clients who are struggling to clear existing facilities to benefit from that. Uh, initially, we thought that was not the right approach. So, how would you want, how would you want the, the banks to popularize this? So, the central bank needs to work with the Federation of SMEs and other business associations to popularize this. You don't go to the entrepreneurs yourself. Work through us, so that you are able to create the pipeline with the banks. When you look at the small businesses that are supposed to be benefiting from that facility, the loan facility that the government put aside, that is the stimulus package. How many do you think are likely to, to benefit? Uh, how many qualify for it? Through this stimulus package, particularly the Small Business Recovery Fund, we could encourage the formalization of businesses. Because if you go to a bank and they say you must be registered, means it means you're forced to register because of this, this facility. But now with the recent changes, it means that the guys who are already in are the ones who will benefit the most. Because a bank can't waste time running after a micro business who doesn't have books, who is not registered, when they have a client within who is struggling with their loan, they know them, they've been servicing the loan in the past, they have collateral, you know, so this is uh, why we were not so keen, particularly on, the, on some of the re recent changes. The other obstacles and many things that have been weighing down these small and medium enterprises are the, the loans that they had acquired before COVID and the grace period that was given. How did you work out a mechanism with the banks to ensure that actually uh, these people 
first recover and maybe later on keep paying. Was yeah. So one of the most successful interventions that government put in place eh, was the credit restructuring. You know, government said that businesses are entitled to have a grace period of initially six months uh, within which their loan can, put, uh, can be put on hold, at least the payment of uh, the principal. And then uh, the government issue gave them an additional six months. So we, we believe this measure worked quite well. Because if that was not the case, you'd find that a lot of businesses, more businesses would actually have closed and more assets would have been uh, auctioned off. You know, but it gave businesses some form of relief, particularly during the lockdown. Because, you know, how was a business expected to service a loan during a lockdown when it's not operational? How were those involved in transport affected during this very time? COVID, high fuel prices, how were these businesses affected? How are they coping? You've been having the issue of high commodity prices, especially high fuel prices. Now, people in the transport sector have to pass on this cost to the consumers, and consumers have not been willing to bear this cost. So a lot of people in the transportation sector have been affected. And in fact, part of the, one of the key causes or drivers of the high cost of commodities is the cost of transport. Considering that even URA slapped other taxes that one time they never used to consider as a means to cushion the government that was having financial challenges. How has this affected the businesses? We, 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 we would like URA's compliance interventions to be fair. They shouldn't go after businesses because they're after hitting targets in order to make up for the shortfall. They should run after businesses because these businesses are not paying their fair share and URA wants them to pay their fair share. But pushing businesses to the wall to pay more than they ought to pay because, you know, putting unnecessary penalties, slapping them with all kinds of ludicrous assessments, I think this is time wasting and may be counterproductive. That's my view. I Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises, thank you so much for according us your time.